Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Real Life Health Show. I have a special guest today, Matt Monarch, and me and Matt uh, go back a very long time. And uh, I want to talk to him about his situation uh, uh, of what he's going through. Most of you that are involved in a raw food lifestyle uh, know Matt and you know his situation of the things he's going through. But before I, I do that, I do want to let people know that the reason I started eating a raw food diet and the reason I started doing all of this is because when I was 19 years old, I, I was really sick and I was diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease, also known as ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. At the time, I didn't know Matt. And it's important, I think, that I update you all a little on, on, on why I do this. And, and we're going to talk to Matt and why I support the decision he's made. So uh, so yeah, I got diagnosed with a, a, a Crohn, a ulcerative colitis actually, and I have a whole testimony on story about how I went through the medical system and and they weren't getting me better. And it came to a time where they re-diagnosed me with uh, Crohn's disease, which is another type of inflammatory bowel, bowel disease, and so on. So I was technically diagnosed with both, but it came to a point where they said if I, you know, eventually. If it, if it doesn't get better, I'm going to need surgery. I went on the raw food diet lifestyle uh, and I got better. And for many years I was better and so on. And, and at some point during my walk, I tried to reintroduce some cooked foods and animal foods and uh, it didn't work too well. And I ran into another issue and so on. But uh, I tell people, and then I got, I am back on raw vegan 100% and I'm, I'm fine. But I tell people all the time, I say, look, you don't understand when you're going through pain and when you're suffering, you want relief. This is my viewpoint on it. You want relief as soon as possible, you know, as soon as possible. You could take care of everything when you're healthy, but when you're not healthy, you know, and this is why people ask me, do you, do you recommend chemotherapy and all these things for people? And it's like, you know, I know it's not the best thing. However, when somebody's suffering, they don't care what's best. They just want to stop suffering as quickly as possible. And it's a whole different thing going uh, to a raw food diet when you're, when you're healthy, just looking to improve as versus when you're sick and going through things. So uh, I want people to understand, and those of you that have experienced uh, sickness and pain, I think would understand the decisions better. At the time, uh, my best friend at the time got diagnosed with ulcerative colitis and decided to uh, get his colon removed. And this was uh, after I had gotten better with raw foods and that was his decision. And here we both are 30 years later or so. And he's, he's actually a doctor and he's doing okay. And I'm on a raw diet and I'm doing okay, but we took two different paths. Well, I met Matt Monarch years uh, after that. Uh, after I had been on the raw food diet for quite a while, and uh, we became good friends and actually co-partners in uh, uh, the raw food world for a while. And, you know, we were just doing great and doing the raw foods. And uh, Dr. Fred Bishy was uh, somebody who had a lot of experience, and we both valued his information and everything else. And, you know, fast forward, you know, Matt... Uh, later on uh moved to ecuador and who's, he's going to tell you his story and and things he's going through but again uh, if you're watching this i want you to understand uh, uh, the emotional side of of disease not just you know why why the decisions people make but you know what people are going through because it's really important we connect with that so i and i connect with matt and i know what he's going through because i I, I understand. I understand. And there's very few people. I, I, knew, I meet a lot of raw foodists that say, I know I'm going to interview Matt here, but I got to share this. This is a lot of people that say, well, I eat vegan or I eat raw. And if I was going through that, I would just do this, this, and this. And I think maybe 90% of the people that I know, uh, if they were in a situation Matt was in from a pain circumstance, they would have probably made the same decision he made and uh, listen to the doctors because, uh, you know, like I said, you're, you're thinking your uh, changes and things change when you're, when your life's on the line and when you're in pain. Uh, so uh, I, I understand his decision, but let's hear Matt's story. Uh, and he's going to, before we talk about the decision and what he went through, let's 
hear what he was going through. I just wanted to do that intro so people understand. Uh, me and Matt are just not strangers. We know each other very well. And, and Matt, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm doing great. Absolutely wonderful. And uh, so you've been through a lot, a lot, man, and, uh, and you're still going through a lot. So well, why don't you, uh, for those of you that don't know your situation, your story, kind of uh, update uh, people of what happened because you want this all raw vegan diet and, 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 you know, and go take it. So what's, what's, what happened now? You're doing great. I mean, for a while. So then what happened? Go ahead. Okay. Well, you were just saying that, um, I made the decision to, um, not do the surgery. I mean, to do the surgery, um, as if like I had other options. Um, I may, maybe you don't understand my story fully, but um, I had a bigger head than you, Paul, when it came to like, I'm going to heal this naturally. Like I was like, so headstrong, like there was no stopping me. Like I was, I literally brought it to the point of where I died in Angela's arms and I was brought to the hospital and rejuvenated. Um, so I was forced to make changes and trust me, I watched all the YouTube videos. I followed, I watched all your YouTube videos, the way you did it. I attempted, I studied all your stuff. I did exactly what you said to do and it didn't work. I also did that with um, all the other people and it didn't work. I tried literally everything. And I was in and out of the hospital many times. And it was when I was doing, um, this methodology where I practically died. And I know many other people in the same situation as me. It's kind of like um, the people get disease on all diets. I know you know many people who have died of cancer on a raw food diet. I, I, could, I could list, I could roll off like 10 people's names right now, right here. But I also know 10 people that have died on a vegan diet, on a cooked food diet, on a carnivore diet. It's like, you know, we, bo we both believe in Jesus and stuff like that, you know, and um, when he would heal someone from disease, he would say, you know, sometimes he would say, don't sin anymore. He wouldn't say, go improve your diet. So it's not necessarily like, I'd, I'd like to just remove the idea that um, there is a mechanical process called diet that can automatically heal a person in every situation. So the method, methods that I tried before um, I uh, got this, before I decided to, before I was forced <laughs> to get this surgery, because my I was big, more headstrong than anyone you could possibly imagine. Um, first, I was reading Tanya Zavasta's books about dry fasting, how it was like three days, one day is counts as three days of fasting, and she healed her teeth and everything like that. And um, I did a seven day dry fast, no water continued to bleed afterwards. I then did a five day dry fast after that. I then watched your videos about how, okay, it's like, um, imagine having a sore inside your body as if it's not like on the outside of your body. And if you have something going past it on an ongoing basis, it's like scratching it. And you wanna start off with the juice fast or and then move to smoothies and stuff like that. I did that for months, didn't work. And then I tried um, a juice fast for like 30 days, it didn't work. I wasn't getting better. And every time I did that, I couldn't even keep on weight. I couldn't absorb food, nutrition. I ended up with osteoporosis and um, I died. I ended up in the hospital. So I had, to, I had to, and then the fibers on a raw food, I needed to get nourishment. I couldn't continue to fast myself to death. So I had to come off the raw food diet at that point. And I was eating very basic foods such as, um, eggs and um, um, that was pretty much it. <laughs> and like, um, it, I, I, it was not that hard for me to transition. Um, but then I tried other methods. I tried the Jordan Rubin approach. I, I, I read all, watched all his videos. I read the maker's diet. I did everything to a T. He healed from disease, but I didn't. So I look at that as like, we're both, we both believe in Jesus. He was healed somehow. Whether you wanna look at it as the mechanical aspect of diet, that's one thing, but I believe that Jesus healed him. But we have two different pathways. Me personally, like he has shown, he's been of service to Jesus, a, a servant, 
and has shown so many people so much on his path. Now, me personally, I'm like in the trenches of like the most extreme raw foodists on the planet. Um, and my pathway is completely different. And maybe I had to go through what I went through just to show people like maybe, hey, look, you know, <laughs> maybe this is something like maybe look at the option of doctors before it gets to as because like I wouldn't have had to remove my colon if I would have got medical help um, many, many years ago, because I, I, I had I fought this for years and years and years before I died, well not died, but like before I um, decided to do the surgery. I did everything in my power. Like I, I am the most extreme hard-headed raw foodist there ever was. So I didn't have a choice in my opinion. I know you're saying like I, I made a decision, but I feel like, no, I didn't make a decision. I, I, my decision was not to do all that, to get surgery. My decision was not to go on meds and I ended up dying for it. And I was forced, like when you're broken down like that and like your life is on the line, like my life is on the line here. Like I was gonna die. Like I, there was no more attempts that I could do anymore. Um, so at that point I'm like, okay, we are going to go the medical route. I have no other choice. I wanna be with my family. I'm, 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 I'm getting rid of this headstrong stuff. Yeah. Now, now uh, I hear what you're saying and, and, First, uh, I don't believe, and maybe you believe different or people believe different, but I, I, I didn't know, by the way, everybody, I, I, I didn't know you were going through this and, and nobody knew you were going through this at the time that and maybe some people that were super close to you, but you, you, at the time it wasn't made public. You struggled with this for a long time, but it wasn't made public. Even to me, it wasn't made public. So uh, I didn't know exactly it was you and what you were going through. So you were going through a lot of this, maybe with your close circle or maybe yourself whatever but eventually you did come out public with it uh but uh, i don't believe after hearing the situation that uh you know diet the the diet you were eating caused this issue because i hear a lot of people saying something like that and 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 if it was diet and anybody that's eating a certain way of diet causes the issue yes you change your diet the issue goes away but if something else is causing the issue Regardless of what you're eating, the issue is not taken care of. And with you, I know you suggested that, uh, you know, you're, you're Jewish and it, it runs high and Jewish people and it ran in your family that your, your brother had it. And, and, and uh, same thing for me. I'm Jewish. I understand that connection. I also, you and I both know that there's other things other than diet that affect our health, some even more, our stress levels and emotional and spiritual things. Uh, do you think diet contributed in any way to what you were going through? Or do you think it was other things? I was public about it. I didn't, I never hid anything. I never hide anything. There was a time though, in the beginning where I was fooled by the devil who started running. I was, I was off the business for a little bit. Um, but I, um, I was public about it when I was around and, um, your question was, um, do I think it was, I, no, I don't think it was the diet that caused this. Yeah. I want to clarify that because a lot of people, they, they, oh, I can't eat raw because I don't want to get this, you know, <laughs> trust me, folks. Uh, it's, I know a lot of people that are raw and not, not all of them are do healthy, not all of them, uh, do it the way I suggest, but everyone that goes on a raw diet isn't getting colitis. Uh, so I just want to clear. And if they are, it's probably not from the diet. Uh, so, uh, but now, as for you being public on this, I mean, at the beginning, there were times I spoke to you and there was stuff going on that you and I spoke, but it wasn't made to my attention exactly that you'd been diagnosed with colitis at that point. And well, you know, I wasn't, I was hiding about, well, I was, I, I was, I, I was, I was against doctors. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, at one point I had to go to the doctor because that's when I died and I, I, he probably diagnosed me with ulcerative colitis. Go on. Now, did you change your diet before you uh, went to the doctor and, and started having problems? Or was there something you changed in your diet before you started having problems? Okay, so one day I just started, I was on my regular raw food diet. And one day I just started waking up with blood in my stool. And um, I went, uh, at, at that point, I was like, oh, this is no big deal. I'm a raw food eater. I could, um, I could do anything. And I just started making attempts and trying to heal. And it wasn't until the first time where I 
died in Angela's arms, like I told you about, where I was trying to attempt to heal this um, naturally, that I went, went to the hospital. That was the first time. And how long was it from when you first saw that blood till that time that you died? <sighs> Are we talking months, weeks, years? Okay, so my okay, so when I first went into the hospital, um, they did stuff to me to where they fixed me in an instant, and then I just went back on my way, continued to do what I always did. Um, but I, 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 Angela would know if I asked her; she has the timeline of everything in her head. I would say probably a year, or I, I, that's my guess. Um, but if I were to ask her, she would know. And then. Um, and then like, they were pretty impressed with how I healed. They said I was in such bad condition that someone else on a different diet wouldn't have like healed so fast with their treatment. And then um, when I went home, I, you know, it just would start to come back because I wouldn't do meds and stuff like that. And then I would have to, I'd end up in the hospital again and stuff like that. And I would make all, do all these different attempts to heal. But you first went to the hospital, you stand a year after you first saw blood? That's my guess, yeah. Oh, okay, estimate. So were you eating just still 100% raw vegan that whole year? Yeah. And trying to heal. Yeah. Okay. And then you went to the doc, the, the hospital. And then after, after a year, is that when you started changing your diet and stuff? No, I got home and I was just like, nope, I want to um, continue on and try other natural healing methods. And I probably did another fast and stuff like that. Now, I know in this whole process, you were going through other things in your life and, and stressful situations. And uh, you also, from a spiritual standpoint, things started shifting in your life as well. And what was this? Were you, were you doing the, the, I know you were always into spiritual things, but the stress that came on in your life and all the things that started uh, happening uh, physically to your body, was it after you started making these spiritual changes or was it before or during the process? It was after everything. Okay, so what, ha what happened was, <laughs> this is all about Jesus. <laughs> so when I, um, I, I was, if you, many people remember the Audio Clarity incident. Um, that was a long time ago. We don't have to go into that. But um, I ended, when that whole chaos was going on at that moment in time, I ended up in the town square of Vilcabamba and I met a man and he, pre he pretended to be a servant of Jesus, but he, I learned later that he worshiped the devil. And um, this, this man who worshiped the devil, you know, you kind of are <laughs> what you worship, um, was the person who I was, okay, anyway, I met him in town at that point. And that was the start. Okay, so, and then I discovered somewhere in this mess, I discovered Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden I got this overwhelming urge to read the Bible. And what happened was before all this, before my health and everything happened, I lost my business, like my, all my riches and everything like that. What I did was I was lying on the couch. I had an entire retreat center um lots of money and you know i was i just discovered jesus and i looked up to heaven and i'm like i want to go all the way i was talking to jesus i want i want to go all the way and 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 the devil warned me like you know if you make a vow like this and want to do something like this you know like the physical aspects don't matter he like showed me his hand and he was like he like like the physical he like showed me like crumbling like the bones and he's like that how houses can fall and all those other things um, i don't care nothing met was more important to me and I just looked up and I want, I want to go all the way. Like, this was like everything to me. Like, I remember it. And like, my entire soul was like, nothing was more important. So the devil acted as if he was part of the kingdom of God, God and kind of like acted as my sponsor. Anyway, so the next couple of years <laughs> was um, absolute insanity um, on a spiritual level. And this is when everything started to fall apart. This is when um, I went through crazy, it was like a crazy amounts of things. I mean, I could go on and on about all that, but this was this, the starting of my physical 
demise on a physical health level family. I lost my family. It's almost like the story of Job. Lost all my riches, but I gained everything spiritually. Um, and that is this right here was the cause of my disease, <laughs> in my opinion. Sure. And when, so when you met this person uh, in the square in El Cabamba, this was after you saw the blood in your stool, right? No. Oh, it was before. Okay. So it was before. So you befriended a person that you met in the square while mm -hmm. everything was seemed to be going great in your life. Mm -hmm. And then how long after you met this person, did you start to, uh, did you see the blood and start and start not to feel well? Angela would know this answer in an instant. And I, I'm just, I suck at this type of thing. Um, I would say one to two years. Okay. So what was going on in your life with this person for the two years, uh, for those two years? Uh, were you, were you, did you see them every day or did you, were they acquaintance? Or what, what were they trying to help you with if nothing was wrong at that point? Well, um, he made me believe. Okay, firstly, when I was around this person, the spiritual power and energy that I would experience and feel was so profound that I, I've never experienced anything like that before. And it was almost like he had this ability to go into my spiritual structure and like remove demons or whatever you want to call it to where I felt like incredibly good. Like it was just like he was doing things like this to me. And I never experienced anything like this before in my life. And um, so he came to the point of making me believe that he was kind of like training me and making me believe that I was like very high stature and um, that he was like, I was growing spiritually. I was getting like authority and like being of service. And um, I'm a very innocent person and I'm very believing and I'm very honest. And um, I couldn't like hurt another person. You know what I mean? Like purposefully. And um, on a spiritual level, I act like that. And um, so I had this belief that I was being of service in a huge way on a spiritual level. And, and I still believe that in some way. It was, it's like something is going on there. Um, and I've been gifted certain abilities, I feel like. Um, and anyway, so it was just like years and years. And, I, you know, I see stuff sometimes. And it was, it was just years and years of like, a supposed training and um he just conned me on every level you can possibly imagine um conned me out of money conned me out of my business conned me uh, like he didn't get my business but he conned me out of all the funds in it conned me out of my land in ecuador okay and, and at this time you still had not confessed your uh, jesus right at this time while you were getting uh, this to know is when i did this is when i did okay so so this spiritual battle was going on in your life uh at the time you met this person, but all this was before you developed your, your illness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So fast forward then. Uh, so what happened when you saw the blood? I mean, was this person, what was he telling you in terms of your, the health situation? I mean, or were you not even talking to him about health stuff? You were talking about everything, but you knew about health and this guy didn't, and you, you didn't need his advice. Whoa. Um, it was more of like, oh, healing on a spiritual level. I mean, he was probably causing a lot of it. Um, um, if maybe he even did cause the entire thing. Um, I'm not 100% sure how that worked. But, um, you know, he was always trying to be helpful. And I was just blinded. Um, he, he was very militant um, in terms of like, uh, like, um, always criticizing me, critiquing me. It, and it, it just, it, yeah, it, it got to the point where um, I just, when I was ill, he was like running the business and I, he, he kept telling me it was doing bad. And I would, you know, it was just like. Um, what, what about, uh, I saw another interview with you where you said you started to, I don't know at what point of the, where it was, but you started to indulge in some drugs. Yeah. Was that um, was that before you were was that before you were uh, had the blood or was that after or both? Um, well, okay. Firstly, many people have done drugs 
and have had no disease all their lives. Sure. Okay. Um, okay, so in college, I did a lot of marijuana. And then um, I continued to do it, um, but I just did reduce the frequency to like, first it was once a month, and then once a year, stuff like that. So while I was on the raw food diet, before all this happened, I'd probably play around with it every rare once in a while, nothing like crazy. Um, but then this guy, um, he was telling me that like the things that he would, I, I did some hardcore drugs and he told me that um, they would help rewire my brain and stuff like that to enable me to do, I don't understand. I, I just was like, oh, okay. Um, but there was a time during this period where I did a lot of marijuana um, and um, so then there were a couple other drugs that I mentioned in this um, video. Um, LSD, which was acid. Um, I did this only a handful of times. It wasn't like a crazy amount. And then in, I remember in John's, I caused this crazy thing to happen because I said I did cocaine like 20 times on his uh, video. It might not even have been 20 times. Just I, I just threw out a number. Um, like it was in a very short period of time, you know, like maybe I did it two times at one go or something. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, that was like the worst thing. Nobody would want to get involved sure. with that. These things, um, I don't think are the cause of my disease. I'm not suggesting uh, that they were or weren't at this point, yeah. but I'm, I'm just asking you. So, but all of this stuff that was going on was before you were bleeding, right? before you saw the blood, right? Yeah, I would say so. Mm -hmm. So you were on a 100% raw vegan diet, just as strict or uh, uh, as, as disciplined as anyone I, I've ever known and, and most people will ever know. But at the same time, you started to indulge in, 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 in these drugs occasionally. Uh, and, and I'm not suggesting that this had something to do with it. I'm just trying to give everybody a timeline. And then, and then you, uh, like I, you said, there are people that do drugs and don't get sick and there are other causes, but for yourself that, but that's the timeline, right? Right. I'm sensitive. Maybe that would happen is what you're saying. Maybe. Okay. Firstly, uh, I, didn't, I didn't say that. I'm just okay. trying to put the timeline together. Just so everyone can understand how strict of a raw food diet, raw foodist I was and Paul knows. We would go to raw food restaurants and I wouldn't eat because I was like not into the gourmet. Do you remember that? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So I was like just crazy. Um, there's, I, I ended up at some point eating gourmet stuff, but anyway. Um, okay. So yes, you are correct, but you have to understand that um, it was just a very small amount. Yeah. Very small amount of, um, of the hardcore drugs that I did. It wasn't like a lot. And it wasn't like for extended periods of time, it was just like a hit. And then like, it was, there was a long time still before I got the disease. Now at the time you were under the belief, uh, I don't know if you still are that, you, since you were so clean, you were more sensitive to like going to the hospital and doing things that the average person can get away with because you're, you were on a much uh, cleaner level. So that if you did something, even eating a hamburger at that time, you're like, look, the average person could eat a hamburger because they're so toxic. But if I eat a hamburger, it would probably kill me because, because of how clean I am. That, that was your thinking at the time too, right? Yeah, because I'm so innocent. I believed everything Fred Vichy said, and I was just like repeating what he was saying. Okay. Uh, and we're going we're, we're, we're gonna to talk about that in a moment. But, uh, so, but, but did, do you still disagree with that at the time you were so clean like if you would have ate a hamburger at that time like just woke up one day and had a hamburger it wouldn't have affected you no i um a hamburger from like mcdonald's i wouldn't say it would have killed me but i probably would have ended up very sick at that time but if it was something like eggs i don't think i would have ended up sick maybe my was so mental about it i would think i was more sick than i was i discovered that from all my experimenting that the quantity of food that you eat kind of like Luigi Cornaro concept is um has more of an impact than like the uh, kinds of food you eat I I agree with that but you know I also though I think that going back and forth is uh more dangerous than 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 like the quality of food you eat if somebody's eating a standard American diet but smaller it's it's not as harmful as eating a, a lot of food 
but somebody going back and forth because from my experience, I did try to include the raw goat milk and the eggs. I know you remember that when I tried to do that after being on a 100% raw vegan diet for many years. And I was able to do it for a while, for like a year. But then I ended up getting, uh, getting sick. And then I stopped that and I got better immediately. And, you know, so I, it affected me, but not immediately. You know, I was able to get away with it for a while. But I do think if I never ate raw to begin with, it wouldn't have affected me the same way. But, you know, there's a lot of different things that cause inflammation in the body. And when I help people get better, because this is what I do on a regular basis, I help people. And with Crohn's disease and colitis is the number one thing I speak to people about. And not all of them listen, not all the people I, I, I consult, uh, consult with me listen. Or well, I remember one time this girl said, I told her, you know, you got to stop eating hot dogs and pizza. You got to, you know, you got to fast and you got to, you know, take these supplements to Redmond Clay and, and all these things. And she goes, yes, I know, I know, I know. And then like, she called me up from the hospital. She's like, well, what you said didn't work. I'm like, oh, what did you eat yesterday? She's like, I had a pizza. And I'm like, well, you weren't doing what I said. So how do you know it didn't work? So I know there's, uh, uh, you know, like a good friend of mine says, what people do in the privacy of their own home, you know, is, is who knows what people are truly doing. Uh, but I just, in my situation and my story and, you know, for myself and, and what's worked best for me. And I think it's wonderful and helpful that you're being honest and open and talking to people about what you went through in your experience. So I thank you for that. As for, as for Dr. Fred Bishy, who, uh, who has a lot of information and knowledge and is doing great. Uh, he also ended up at some point having some issues, non-diet related issues with health, where he had some asbestos, uh, uh, no mold poisoning and stuff and ended up in the hospital and so on and, and almost died there, you know, because what he's going through, but he, he ended up going out and so on and he's doing okay now. But you had such a high esteem for, his teachings, you wrote a book based on his teachings and stuff. And I remember there was a time I thought it was one of your best posts ever, because you and I believed this idea, you can't catch a cold. We used to believe that you can't catch a virus, you can't catch a cold. But I remember there was a time you said, you, you said, I'm throwing out all my Arnold Eric books, and I'm throwing out all these crazy books that say you can't catch a cold because my family was all sick, and I got sick. And, uh, and I got a cold and, and that's not true. You could definitely catch a cold because I did or whatever, uh, uh, an illness. So I understand how you, like in being extreme as you are, you're like, I'm throwing all these books out because that's not true. So you said, you mentioned earlier that, you know, Fred Bishy was saying you can't deviate once you're in a strict diet. And so you were trying to listen to him. So did that stop you from listening to Arnold Arid and Fred Bishy moving forward on anything? Well, no, I, um, so it, it's almost like a shedding. It's almost like, I, like, I believed everything Fred said <laughs> for so many years. And as I was like trying to heal and I, all these points would come in my head from Arnold Arrett, from Norman Walker and, um, Ann Wigmore and Fred Bishi and, um, and, as I just continued to fail, I, I continued to go on and go on until it, like it fail, it fail, 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 fail to where I just like, I kind of like had to shed it all. And it's almost the same thing with the spiritual guy. He told me so much crap on a spiritual level, which is so much more intricate than diet. I'm like every little aspect of like spiritual battling and this and this sensation and that, blah, 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 blah. like now I'm shedding all that crap. It's like, um, I'm just walking my own path. It's not that I don't, um, yes, there are, yes, there are certain aspects in me still there. Like um, my situation has, has, has gotten ridiculous with this whole surgery thing. Um, I was misdiagnosed. I shouldn't have gotten the surgery the way I did. I could have probably avoided the surgery now. That's a whole nother story if you wanted to go into it. But um, whenever I come off a of prednisone, no matter what diet I do, um, I have always fallen um, bedridden again, and I'm, I'm coming off prednisone right now, but this time I'm on biologics. This, we're starting with Humira, and I'm coming off of prednisone right now. That's why I have the prednisone moon face. It looks like why my face is all bloated and stuff, and I'm scared as hell, but supposedly I'm not going to have issues this time because I'm on the Humira. That's what we're hoping. Now, my raw vegan roots are in me. Like, um, 
right now, I eat two meals a day. I don't snack in between meals. I'm still as strict as I always was. I always eat the same thing every day. I'm just as crazy as I was at that table at the raw food restaurant, Paul. And I'm tightening up my diet even more just to eliminate things that I feel are not ideal. And so I feel that in conjunction with the meds and with being extremely strict the way that I am, um, that I could succeed on this level because the odds are not in my favor in the long run right now. <laughs> oh, you believe in Jesus. So they are. Yeah, there but, we go. Yes. But I, but I hear, hear what you're saying No, but you, so you, you don't believe diet was what created your issue. Uh, and I don't know at the time if you believe that, but why'd you change your diet if you don't believe diet was the issue? Or why are you continuing not to be on a hundred percent raw vegan diet if you don't think that was the issue? Okay, so um fiber would kill me right now. <laughs> to be I honest. understand, and everybody who has ulcerative colitis and they're in an inflammatory attack, you know. Raw foods, there's a difference between raw foods. And this is why I recommend people uh, with blended and with, with uh, a, a juicing and stuff when they're in an inflammatory attack. But people, it's like when people go to Hippocrates Health Institute and they have an inflammatory attack and they're given like salads. No, you can't be doing that at that point. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really dangerous because people don't, don't get it. I, I hear what you're saying there. But uh, so, so. In general, so you're just trying to stay away from fiber. Is that the reason why you're not on, on an all raw diet now? Well, also, um, I became so malnourished, and I'm not saying it's because of the diet. Um, I did crazy Norman Walker vegetable juicing, as you know, many juices yes. a day. It was, yes. Okay. Um, and I did all the combinations, went to the farmer's markets, even did the greens from turnip leaves. Um, that was the best calcium drink you can. But um, I wasn't absorbing um, because of the ulcers and everything like this. I ended up with osteoporosis. Um, and so I personally feel that at this point in my life, I need dairy without a doubt. Um, just, and I understand the whole concept of like mucus and everything like that, but um, I need like nourishment. Um, that's cooked right now at this point in my time. I need to rebuild and stuff like that. And I need calcium. I need, <laughs> I need things like this. And um, protein, eggs, like I, and now that I've been on this diet for a while, um, which is pretty much eggs and tuna fish is what I live off of and um, milk from A2 cows. This is like my diet right there. That's pretty much it with um, some yogurt and stuff like that. Um, and the worst thing I do is saltine crackers, just so everybody's here's, I'm completely honest. <laughs> um, John Kohler said those were inert, <laughs> but anyway, um, now that I've been on this type of diet right now, it's just very easy on the system. It's very nourishing in my opinion. And I feel that I may have like, I, if I would have known what I know now, maybe I would have changed my diet earlier. Not because um, the raw food diet doesn't work or it's not good, because I do miss it and I love so many things about it. Like I can't, like nut butters mess the hell out of me now. Like I just like, I can't do that. I, I just tried to eat nut butter the other day and I was just like, ah. Oh. Um, and it's just so easy and gentle. And like, I just want to live my life in peace and I, I feel like it's very nourishing. And yeah, so. That's just my standpoint now. Okay. Okay. What about uh, supplementation when you were going through this? I know you've always been into supplements and I know I recommend supplements and recommended even some to you while you're going through this, but what supplements specifically did you take uh, for uh, the bleeding? And uh, the, even after being diagnosed, you said it was many years, this, because it was like what, five or six years that you were going through this struggle of bleeding before you decided to finally get to surgery. Yeah. It might've even been a little bit longer than that. Okay. So what supplements were you taking, if any, at the time to specifically target like the issue? Um, okay. So there was a time period where I was eating slippery elm bar. Um, for months, dude. I was trying to do perfect diet. This was in the very beginning, actually, when I started bleeding. Um, blended 
I made apple sauce out of blended, just raw blended apples. I even peeled them and took the seeds out. And then I would um, mix in slippery elm bark. And then I'd be eating a lot of aloe um, in coconut water. And um, I was pretty much living off of this. And then things like papaya. Um, and then I would do blueberries. Oh, and then, you know, I would probably do my standard salad and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, you know, avocado and stuff like that. And there were times where, point where I was doing blueberries with almond butter, like mixed it all together. It was really good. Okay. As a I did recommend to you something at one time. Uh, and I think you took it. It was uh, Redmond Clay. Did you ever, ever? Yeah, that? I was in at that time around. Oh, well, I don't know if it was that time, but um, I didn't do it for long, no. But um, yeah, I did do it. For me personally, for me, that made a tremendous difference for me, you know, and, 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 and people yeah. I, that have colitis and Crohn's. Uh, and then later on, I, I mentioned to you about the Velasta Astatantin. I don't know if you ever got around to that because you were really like in and out of the hospital at that point. And uh, that the antioxidant you were talking about? Yeah, the, uh, the Astatantin that just is such an oh, amazing yeah. anti inflammatory. But I don't know if you ever even no, got I didn't a get chance to even look into that. Okay. That's another thing I do highly suggest when people have inflammation on any level. And it's just the testimonials have been just crazy. So it's something definitely to look into as you get off the prednisone for sure. Uh, you know, and, but so here you are. So, so now you, you confess Jesus as your Messiah, as your savior, this, this other devil demon is around you, this demon spirit. And I know all about spiritual warfare, you're suffering physically. And it's very similar to, uh, the story of Job, you're 100% right with that. And, and by the way, everybody, when when I first met Matt, neither myself nor him believed in Jesus. And I had a crazy uh, transformation, 100% uh, change in that. And, and it, it was just it is it is pretty crazy. Uh, but it's amazing. And, you know, if we have to go through these things to get there, you know, so be it, you know, but, but now so now here you so you go in, in and out of hospital. So then you finally decide uh, what you were questioning about after you came public, because for a couple of years, I was talking to you. You said I had a friend that was sick and, and stuff and getting some information, but you weren't, you didn't spill the beans yet and tell me what exactly was going on with yourself. Uh, but then when you finally did, I told you, I have a friend, one of my best friends who had you know, he grew up with him. He decided to get to surgery. I told you about him. He was a doctor. I, I think I even sent you an interview with him about his surgery and everything that he went through. I was practically begging with you and pleading, you know, and praying that you would contact him just to talk to him and hear his side of it. Did you ever get in touch with him or, or try to? I know at that time, a lot of people were contacting you. So I'm just curious. No, I didn't. Um, I browsed through the video though. Like, um, yeah, I didn't get in contact with him. Okay. And then, so you decide to get to surgery. And like we said at the beginning, I don't blame you because I know that I worked on Wall Street when I had colitis and I know the, the pain and the situation and I completely understand. Uh, so, but you made the decision to get to surgery. Uh, now you say, and I've heard you say, you did everything. You've done everything everything i heard you say that like you tried just about everything and nothing worked so and you were dying so you and you even said that you were pretty much left with no choice you had to get to surgery right i always say i, I didn't try your urine therapy method that i didn't want yeah to. yeah it was, it's a, it was, well, people come to me and says matt said he tried everything you said but he didn't but i know in john's interview you, you were explaining about that so i don't say to a lot of people because some people will think this is crazy but from my experience i met a russian doctor who told me about urine therapy, which is drinking your own urine. And I was willing to do anything to get better as well. And I tried it and it actually worked. And I had pleaded with you several times, Matt, just give this a try, give this a try. And you said, I, Paul, I will do anything, but that's one thing I will not do. And it's basically drinking your own urine, urine for the basically. And, and, you, told and me, you told me more importantly, I had to do enemas with the urine. I had to like boil it down. That's, to what, like that's what that's what helped me get the inflammation down. And this Russian doctor had amazing testimonials with it, uh, boiling the urine to concentrate it and doing enemas with it because inflammatory bowel disease is a colon issue. 
And but it's one thing, even to this day, I think you're glad the decision. There's no way I would ever try that because to you, it's it's just uh, too gross to even consider, right? Well, yeah, and also I have to consider like the whole entire house would smell of urine, the pots would smell of urine. Like um, if I was boiling it down, and I have a family who you know I don't think they want to like <laughs> be breathing that stuff in. And but you but you made the decision, uh, but but yeah. It, yeah. Okay. So I didn't try everything. And maybe like in my head, when I say everything, I mean like what I feel are the most potent and important things. And that's like fasting, juice fasting, dry fasting, um, like, like the things that heal disease, like on, like those are the true things that heal, like taking products in my opinion, doesn't necessarily, you know, they could be helpful, but they're not the like, the, the, but, the, but here the, I was, here I was, uh, one of your best friends telling you, Matt, I've been through this and this is what healed me. You know, so I'm just thinking if you aren't willing to or, 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 or to try this because your your valid reasons because of your reasons. Is there anything else that maybe and maybe you don't know, maybe you haven't thought about it, somebody and I'm not questioning your decision at all. But is there anything else that maybe somebody suggested that you didn't think was worth trying? Absolutely. Um, many people were trying to send me their Sunrider MLM supplements. Um, I've, I've tried other things like hyperbaric chambers. The pressure made me bleed more. Um, like, yeah, people were, I, there was many things that I turned down. It is correct. Okay. So uh, not that I completely understand when people get cancer diagnosis, they get bombarded with products and all these different things. So I completely understand at some point a person has to say, Hey, I can't, I, I got to limit it to some degree and I got to do what just makes sense. I can't, it, you, a person can't do everything, literally can't, because even if they wanted to, there's just too many people, too many things and it's too much. Uh, but, and I, and I completely understand the pain and the suffering you go through and my well, best friend went through it. Huh? That it's going to die. Like, yeah, I, gonna... I understand. And, and yeah. people with chemo, for example, chemotherapy. So there are people that are told by their doctors, they're going to die if they don't get take chemo. At one time, you were 100% against chemo. But and I've always said, you know, the doctors have, you know, a pal, it's a powerful thing. And if it's true, I mean, yeah, it's one thing not to take chemo because you don't believe in it. But if it's going to, if you, if, if it's going to save your life, well, you know, we're not willing to die for our beliefs, you know? So, so do you, how do you feel now like about that? Like knowing how bad chemo is, but if it would stay somebody, save somebody's life, do you think people should consider it before completely cutting out and be like, like you once were saying no way? Chemo, uh, can't, chemo scares the crap out of me. I don't know enough about it. Like, I don't know about that one. Like, but from other things, that's like the one that like, I just, I'm, I try, I'm scared of, like, I just I want to stay away from it. I, I don't know enough about it. Sure, but it's, at, but you, at one point you felt the same way about doctors and surgeries. Yeah. And what I'm saying is somebody that's diagnosed with cancer, they were kind of in a situation like you, they're told by a doctor, if you don't do this, you're going to die, you know? Well, every situation is different. It's not like because a doctor said it, like, um, if you were to take chemo out of the picture and then put all other diseases in there with all other meds, then my, my, my story changes. Then I'm like, you might want to look into that. Um, in terms of the chemo thing, I don't know enough about it. I remember seeing a TED interview with a woman who said, I have cancer and I was recommended chemo and I'm just going to live my life out without the chemo. And she continued on and I don't know if she's still alive. Um, but yeah, I, I, for all other things though, it, it's always good just to like go to the doctor and see what's up. Me personally, if I would have gone on the meds, the Humira, when it was first recommended to me many years ago, <laughs> I'd still have my colon. I'd be in a much better position than I am now. And I wish I would have done it. Yeah. And, and if that's the way you look at it, you know, I understand my, my philosophy in life is to try to have no what ifs or could have been because you are where you're at and, and we don't know. I mean, maybe you would have went on that and Maybe it would have been better, but maybe not. You don't know, you know, so don't second guess these That's decisions. Because who knows? Who knows what would happen? You know, who knows what kind of reaction you would have had way back when, when you were maybe a little cleaner or something. You don't know. So, you, but you're where you're at now. 
and and where you're at now. So when when surgery was an option for you, at the time you were diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Correct me if I'm wrong. You weren't even thinking that okay, maybe they just misdiagnosed me and I had I have Crohn's. You were, that was that wasn't even a thought, right? Was it because number one, you you just had so much confidence in the doctors at that point, or was it number two that you just wanted to have relief immediately, or was it number three that you just didn't do the research? Research in terms of what? <laughs> to, to know that it's often misdiagnosed and it, and people that do get um, surgery sometimes this happens. Okay, so okay, at this point, I made a, a okay, so. I was on prednisone at this point before, like months before. And I, 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 prednisone always heals me immediately. I do really well with prednisone. But when I come off of it, I get messed up. And they were trying to put me on a biologic called Intibio, but it could take six months to work. And I was already in the hospital bedridden, like almost ready to die. The, the surgeon was trying to convince me to do, sur to do the surgery. And my, I was like, screw you. It sounded like he wanted money and it just didn't feel right. However, now here I was trying to make the antibio work and they, they were telling me there's too many immune suppressant drugs. They gave me something called Zelljans. This usually works in three days. They said they wanted me to come off of prednisone while I take the Zelljans and kind of like, so I could handle the weight for antibio to kick in and start working. And when I did this, I ended up screaming on the couch every single day. And I didn't like, I, every night I couldn't stand the pain. It was so bad. I, I, I was screaming in the mid, like 3 a.m. And I had to take these pain meds and it was just like ridiculous. And um, I drove myself to the hospital saying I wanted to get surgery. Now at this point, if I would have like known that it was the prednisone that was actually working, I would have taken the risk of taking all these immune suppressant drugs and taking the prednisone for another six months until the antibio kicked in. And I could have probably avoided surgery at that point. So then I got the surgery and um, it was time for me to wean off prednisone. I was doing really well. I was walking. Keep in mind, I, you guys, I was at bedridden. I ended up in a diaper um, for months on end with osteoporosis. I couldn't, it was ridiculous. I couldn't even walk anymore. Um, became really skinny. Um, so then I um, was walking. I was really happy. And then I came off the prednisone um, after the surgery. And then the, the, the whole thing came back. And they said, maybe we misdiagnosed you. They're not even sure, really. And now the doc and the doctor was like, oh yeah, when I the surgeon was like, yeah, these uh these biologics in the long run, <laughs> they, they they don't they're you're gonna end up back to me at some point to do surgery anyways. I was like, screw you. This is like part of his money plan, or whatever. So now that I got the J pouch and he's like, and now that I come back to him saying he brought came to me in the hospital because I got everything came back again. They think they might have just mis misdiagnosed me, but they're not sure. He's like, Oh yeah, these these biologics are really good, they'll probably clear it right up. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's, he changed his tune. He didn't want to like give me surgery again right then. And, there. and it's just very, it's part of my path again. It was almost like it was supposed to happen. I almost think on some level that the J pouch was, they wouldn't have given it to me if they would have known I had Crohn's. I probably have a bag right now, but I think like it was meant to be and I'm in a much better place than I would have been. So um, I feel like I, I could have been on prednisone longer. Okay, so back to your question um, was, the whole misdiagnosis thing. Um, I didn't, there was another girl who um, actually was in the same situation as me, um, but she had Crohn's and she got a J pouch it seemed like. And she actually went on your diet and it didn't work. She tried to get help from you and she did the green juice fast and she almost died and she ended up having to go get this um, to do the J pouch surgery. And I was actually talking to her about the whole thing and how her life was so good right now and all these different things. And um, she was like a big support for me. And when I, um, so I was really, I was really excited to be in the same position with, as her. She was at the gym a lot and stuff like that. And um, so I didn't, I thought the chances were very low that it could come back. And I thought that it would be healed. And unfortunately, um, I still suffer on a spiritual level in that area. Um, like, I feel like I'm, there, there's like something going on, like on a warfare aspect that I'm always continuing to deal with. I don't even necessarily think the diagnosis has much to do with it. I think all of this is seriously, I'm still dealing with this on a spiritual level. 
and um, I know Jesus is in control and there's a reason why maybe I'm doing something wrong or maybe like there's a reason for it. I don't know. But um, I still honestly think it's a spiritual thing. Sure, sure. And uh, so what's your plan uh, moving forward now? I mean, where are you at now? What's your plan? I know and uh, you have your website. You're, 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 you're selling, still selling the highest quality raw food products out there and, and supplements. And, you know, so you still, that's still part of what you do. And, and your website's the raw food world, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I do take a lot of these products though. Like for example, the Kinti Central I put in my water. Sometimes I take pine pollen. I take postbiotics, you know, stuff like that. Okay. And, 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 you know, you've researched and at times in your life, you take things and you don't take things and you see what's working, what's not working. Uh, but you, but you, you research and, and you're always trying to have the, the, the best things on your website to offer to sure. people. And so I'm going to put your link below the video here. So people can go there and check that out. And also so, uh, any sale, any people make, it's going to help support your situation because you have a family, you have children. And, and as you said, uh, I think it was a spiritual attack and spiritual warfare, but you're pretty much your business, your money and everything was, was uh, destroyed at, at one point and you're building all that back. So I want to encourage people to definitely go to his website and, and, and get some of the things there and, uh, and just where are you at now and uh, what's your plan for the near future? Just so everybody knows, I kind of like to think that my story is similar to the story of Job. Like, Many, he got disease and this had nothing to do with like any choice he had, it was a test. But anyway, um, everything that he was, everything was taken away, but then everything was given back to him. And some crazy miracles have happened in my life that are so profound. It's almost like a joke from Jesus, like, <laughs> like, um, like the gifts <laughs> have just been like, if, if like if I were to tell the story, it'd be like if you don't believe in Jesus after this, I don't know what your problem is. Um, but yeah, so and similar to you, Paul, you told me stories about um, you know the gifts that you've been given um, financially. Uh, yeah, um, somehow you just get by, you know. Um, but yeah, so moving forward, um, yeah, uh, right now I'm just. Uh, trying to make this work in the long run for me. Um, you know, I'm trying to create a nest egg for my family, you know, just in case something does happen to me. Um, and I mean, yeah, that's like, those are my main goals and to be just very healthy in the best possible way that I possibly can. And um, you were mentioning on my website, we, uh, we carry raw foods, all the you know dried fruits, nuts, seeds. We got freeze dried durian. I know that's a big one amongst people. We've got the Peruvian olives that people put in salads. I sometimes put those in my stuff. Um, lots of good stuff in there, and um, yeah. So um, yeah, I just continue to march on. Maybe I'll start touring again, telling my story. And yeah, there's a whole spiritual side that's like really profound um, in regards to all this. Now, I know uh, doctors will prescribe marijuana these days as a pain treatment, and I actually do think it's better than uh, opioids and things like this. It's much less addicting. Uh, but, I, I'm, but on the other hand, I don't think it's really good to take. But so where are you at now? Are you doing any uh, medical marijuana at this time? At this time, no. Um, so about there was a time when I, uh, when I first got back to the States from Ecuador, I, I was doing it once a night. Um, probably for six months. Then I stopped. And then, you know, I'd probably say like a few months ago, um, I did it um, a couple times. And I'm at the point where I'm just like, the negative impact on me is too, more, too profound compared to like the positive I get from it. So I don't really do it anymore. I mean, you know, every once in a while there's a desire, but yeah, it's been a while since I've done anything like that. And besides the uh, the medication drugs by the doctors that they use, uh, there's no other drugs that you're currently uh, indulging in besides the the marijuana. There's nothing else. You're completely done with all of that, and you're done with that that guy, and you're done with all that stuff. Oh yeah, I've yeah, um, I haven't done 
any of those other drugs since I was in Vilcabamba, Ecuador, many, many years ago. And um, yeah, this guy, uh, when I first came back to the United States and I finally realized what was going on, um, my eyes were opened, you know, they were closed and then they were opened. Um, I uh, just locked them out completely. And that's when I thought I was going under bankrupt, I thought. And I was just like, that was one of the most amazing spiritual experiences of my life. Like went from millions of dollars to in debt, a million dollars <laughs> living on my mom's couch, like just healing with on meds. And I thought like, you know, I, I thought I was gonna, I don't know, I, maybe I was gonna be an Uber driver or something. I don't know. <laughs> and then like, I saw there was life still in the business. And then all of a sudden I was, it kept going. And then people started helping me. A lot of Christians helped me. Um, the Sunwire guys built me a website. They paid for it. Um, Bob McCauley does my drop shipping. Um, he's believes in that. He just took it me on and stuff like that. Um, uh, he's into Jesus. Like, um, I was just like lifted out of like a rut in a really crazy way. And, um, yeah, we'll see what happens from here. Sure. Sure, man. Well, we're praying for your healing and I continue to pray for your, your healing, uh, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And, uh, you know, and I thank you for just being so honest and open with what you're going through, what you've been through. Uh, but like people don't understand how somebody could smile that that's going through what you're going through. But th those are people that don't <laughs> have not yet opened their eyes to uh, Jesus. Uh, it's, it's just amazing. Yeah, I'm very happy. There's one more thing you might want to talk about with me, because this is like big in the raw vegan community, because as you know, I used to do a lot of enemas and colonics. And um, people tend to like to um, blame this disease on that with me. So I just want to put that out there. Um, I personally, as we discussed in this interview, I think it's the main cause of it all was, uh, um, was a uh, spiritual situation. But I st as soon as I saw blood for the first time, I stopped enemas and colonics immediately and never did one again. Um, so you would think someone would heal if something like that would happen. And then you go on prednisone and you heal right up and then the disease comes right back and there's no enemas there. So it's like, could that have sparked something? And how many people do we know in this movement that do enemas as frequent as I did for longer periods of time, you know? Um, so that's just something like I, I, I wanted to put out there. Sure. And, uh, you know, I want to put it out there to make it clear that, you know, I don't believe the raw food diet or the raw vegan diet uh, causes colitis or cause your colitis. But if somebody has colitis or Crohn's disease, they got to be really careful about the, how they proceed. Uh, you know, steamed vegetables are okay and, and, and blended food. You can't eat a whole raw salad if you're in an inflammatory attack. Uh, but uh, at the same time, raw foods, in my opinion, is still the, the best diet out there based on uh, uh, what I've seen. And, and, and know about digestion and so on. Uh, and I don't think it was the raw diet that created this. And uh, so, you know, there are a lot of other aspects of health out there and people are gonna have a lot of opinions about your choices. People are gonna have a lot of opinions about the things that they do. Uh, but ultimately I want people to just continue to research and, you know, and hopefully develop a relationship with our wonderful creator, Yahshua, Jesus. and. And, and pray to him about the decisions they need to make and not go to other people, but go to him. So I thank you, Matt, for sharing all this information with us. And, uh, and we'll look to have you back on uh, for continuation of it. Do you plan uh, to continue with the, the diet that you're eating now or you take it day by day? And, and what are you doing? I take it day by day, but um, I'm really liking this Luigi Cornaro concept that we, uh, we were both into a lot. Um, Luigi Cornaro, I mean, maybe you could explain it, but, uh, I'm very strict on what I eat and I just keep on, I plan over time to tighten it up. Um, firstly, I'm like, I'm in the phase of just getting rid of any last little bit of just like stuff that's not ideal on a quality level versus quantity. And then over time, I'll probably just like tighten it up more and more and more. And I think this is, um, possibly the pathway to my success. Well, speaking of him, uh, I wrote a book called The Daylight Diet, and The Daylight Diet was uh, based on Ellen White's books, which uh, she was a, a Christian uh, uh, lady who had wrote, wrote wonderful health books on eating as little as possible, 
Uh, but there was another fellow who wrote a book called the, the Stomach Speaks. No, no, not the Stomach Speaks. Uh, I forget the name of it, but it's an old time book. And he had the idea of it's not we could eat whatever we want. It's just the amount of uh, the amount and more important, the time we eat it, not to eat it late at night. And in all my research for the daylight diet, it all came down to what Luigi Corand Corando, or how do you pronounce the last name, Cornara. Uh, was saying the amount of food and, and when we eat it. But that goes back to what Fred Bishy was telling us a long time ago. You know, not eating late and not overeating, eating these small amounts where we can get to a point to do that. And uh, Luigi was a guy who lived in the 1700s and was able to eat that small amount and live such a long life. And he got sick when he tried to add a little bit more. Uh, so, you know, we do have to be careful because not that we become more sensitive, but we have a bad day when we're doing that and we have a bad day. And then it's like, man, that it just has such a impact. We can almost get drunk from food if we're used to so little and then we eat more, right? It's like, it's yeah. just crazy. And when we connect with our bodies and just clean out and that stuff, but, but that's good. I'm, I'm, that's good that, you know, you're sticking to your health roots and, and understanding the amount of food is so uh, important and overeating is the most detrimental thing we do with our, with our diets. You know, that's a really important thing. That's yeah, good. I think one of the reasons why my life is saved is, be, I mean, one of the reasons why, well, Jesus, of course, but also like, um, I feel like it's because of how strict I am with my diet and the quantities of food I eat. Luigi Cornaro, I think, had a colon disease just like us, and he healed it by just doing 16 ounces of food every day and like a certain amount of liquid every day, and he just stuck by that forever. And um, yeah, so and then you, at one point, he went down to 12 ounces of food. And like what he ate, though, was, you know, I think he ate bread even and wine or something like that but you know it was different back then a lot of different things it was the 1700s food was different back then and also i don't i i don't i mean if i don't want anyone to start thinking they're gonna they should eat that little because uh that's uh there's a lot of stuff going on in the world today that's uh can change those things uh you know and it's it's but it's uh, the concept of just not overeating and just you know controlling the amount of food we eat is really important when it comes to our health and and i i hope that it's uh a key to success for you in in in, in healing and sharing your testimonial because what it comes down to is you went into this as a egotistic new age uh uh, health guru, and you're coming out of this as a humbled uh, follower uh, and believer in in Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and you know, and it's it's uh you know, it's better it's better that way than the other way around. So <laughs> yeah, you know, and I know the pain. I know it. I know it. This is why I, I recommend people connect with other people. Uh, when they're going to health coaching and stuff, people that can know the emotional side of it. And, and I understand that, I, you know, and I understand and what you're going through and, and stuff. And we didn't even talk about a lot of the uh, things on a, on a personal level you went through during this, which would devastate and just literally devastate and kill people and the stress that comes along with that. We didn't even get into that and we don't need to, and we don't have time for that, but people have to understand that it, it's just, this stuff is not just, diet one of the most devastating things a human being can go through is divorce you know and and physically and stressfully it's one of the most devastating things a human being can go through and during this whole process or proud you know you this is what happened to you maybe even at the beginning of this process which could have a had a huge impact on on, on what you were going through and well, we're not divorced right now yet <laughs> okay but it's still a separation even it's whoa. yeah we live together um i'm not like ruling out staying with her and stuff like that but yeah uh the most my intensity was like the devil on a daily basis spiritual energy it, it was insane like <laughs> this is like it's like most people wouldn't be able to handle it, I feel like. It's like almost being electrocuted on a daily basis with such extremity, extreme craziness, dealing with like serpents and things that are just like unfathomable, like being in the pits of like, uh, 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 like dimensions that you shouldn't be in, <laughs> like on a daily basis for so long. Um, the drugs ex ex 
extremely making it even crazier. Other drugs I did, I forgot were um, plant medicines such as San Pedro. I only did like two or three times um, and things like that. Uh, yeah, it was just um, that, yeah, I just would put that through. Lots what about wheatgrass? Do you do that? No. Nah. Man, when I was at Hippocrates with my colitis, the first time I went there, I was doing like seven ounces a day. And I think that had a tremendous impact. But but I see what you're doing. And my, my friend that I was best friends with growing up, I still talk to him. We never had any, I never had any issues with him. I chose my path. He chose his path. We never had any issues. Like you saw, I interviewed him and we spoke about that. And uh, same thing with you. I don't doubt your decision. Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life, brighten up your life.